Uh, we've touched a little bit on micropoly in the earlier videos and dynamics where we, you know, did the micropoly ropes and dynamically untwisted them and stuff like that. But if we go through here, if you turn micropoly off again, you'll just see your plane here. Oops, let's turn micromesh back off. Sorry about that. Uh, so we'll turn micropoly on, and again, it's going to go to this. Uh, version here. So if we go through and tap any of these, like say chainmail, uh, now we're going to get these chainmail links. Now you're going to see a fit and a weld over here. What that's going to do is most of these by default are set up, and we'll, we'll get into custom setup and how to make your own uh, in a bit here, but essentially most of these are set up in a way that as it goes, it, you can see it's just one little mesh here just being repeated across uh, every single face of those polygons. In fact, if we want to check these out, we can hold down Alt click on that chainmail O2 and that's going to push that out over here into its own uh, tool. So a couple things to see in here, if we go into our floor and we turn on Z so we can see the floor in the back here, it fits perfectly within uh, this little square right here. If we want to see exactly what that is, go in here to draw, take this grid size and make it one. So now you can see, actually let's go in here to draw modifiers we're going to crank up this frame opacity so you can see that frame uh, a little bit better. So now you can see the left and the right match up and the bottom and the top, they all fit right within this uh, square here. The cool thing about ZBrush is if you ever have a mesh that's too big, you can always go down here to Deformation Unify and it'll fit it within that bounding box. Now there's going to be some construction methods we need to talk about in order to get this to line up, but you can see this one's already lined up perfectly. So what that allows us to do is we can hit W, and if we hold down Control and drag off a copy, if you hold down Control and Shift, you're going to see that little number, that it's kind of hard to see, that white number at the bottom there is updating in 0.1% uh, or 0.1 increments. So if we drag this over here to 2, we've basically moved this over 2 full units. And if we let go of that, you're going to see it matches up perfectly, so it'll weld those points when we apply our micro poly. Same thing if we go in this direction, we hold down control and shift and drag this up exactly two units, you're going to see these points line up perfectly. So again, when we're tiling this over an entire sheet, those things will line up and will allow us to weld. So if we go back to that sheet we we're playing with here that had our micro poly applied, we can go ahead and turn our floor off. If we go down here and we have micro poly on and we have this one selected, we have fit with scale to one, and that's going to be the default. And then we have weld. If we go through here and we hit apply, and we go through here with our smooth brush, you can see those points are nice and welded. Another way to test that is to go back in here to dynamic. Now, just so you know, when I hit dynamic again, it's going to go ahead and apply that micro poly again. So this chain mail is going to go to every single face of those new that new geometry you have. Kind of a cool effect, but not really what I'm looking for. So I'm going to turn micro poly off here. Uh, what I'm really looking for is going in here and doing a smooth subdiv preview. And that's going to give you a preview of what it would look like if you hit this divide uh, button twice. So now if I go out of polyframe mode, you're going to see those are nice and linked together. And because we hit apply with Micropolyon, these are all this is all real geometry. So we can go through here, we can like inflate this geometry if you want to, or yeah, go in here to like deformation. I guess I'll show you down here, deformation, inflate if we want to inflate along those normals there. You can see it's just kind of inflating along the surface normals, which is totally useful for something like this. However, where this becomes not so useful is let's say, you know, hey, I want to take this chain mail and I want to kind of like pull it or drape it over a head or something or put it on as a shirt. In order to do that, I would probably keep this as a micro poly. So let me show you how to do that. Let's go ahead and hit our comma key and under pro the project tab over here, I'm going to double click this demo anime head again. Let's turn on perspective, turn off the floor, and I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to append a plane. And that's going to put a plane right here by the head. I'm going to hold down. Uh, shift. I'm going to just hold down shift and snap. Hit W to go into Gizmo mode, hold down shift and snap so that we can just put this plane basically right above this head. Uh, with that plane selected, I'm going to grab my dynamics menu. You can just double click these arrows right here, these divider arrows. Take your dynamics menu. Uh, if you already have a menu in here, just click that little white dot to get it out of there. Take the dynamics menu, white dot, and drag right in here. I'm going to, and if you want to know more about collision surfaces and dynamic stuff, go and watch the earlier videos uh, in this series. You can click on the description and go to the full playlist. But we're going to go over here to collision volume, and we have resolution set to 3200, maxed out, and our inflates down to zero, so it'll fit pretty close to the head. Uh, in fact, let's crank that inflate up just a bit. 
Now if I turn on gravity and run the simulation, uh, it's going to go very, very fast. We're going to turn that gravity strength down uh, quite a bit, maybe to two, and just go ahead and drape that right on the head. So if we wanted to do, like, you know, turn this into a chainmail head napkin, we can go down here and let's undo back to where we just had the plane. We can go in here to turn on dynamic. And my default smooth is turned on. That's going to come into play here because if we go in here to turn micro poly on and we choose our chain mail, all of a sudden that chain mail got really small. And that's because we're getting a dynamic preview. It's still there. It's just a bunch of chain mail uh, right there. So what that's doing is saying, hey, apply the micro poly to every face. Well, if every face you have from your original here, if we turn on polyframe, is being subdivided twice, you know, you're getting obviously a very dense mesh. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the smooth subdiv down to zero, and now all of those original faces are now getting that chainmail applied. Now, this is something also interesting. If I go to the back side here, you're going to see there's chainmail that exists. If we go back, oh, well, we went into a new project, but if we very quickly go back into here and we alt tap this chainmail, you can do single and double sided micropoly as well. So this chainmail over here, Here's the chainmail mesh. If we go to the back, it actually has thickness. It's got substance to it. You know, it's tangible in all directions. So that means this micro poly is also tangible in all directions. We don't even have to apply thickness. Now, this isn't going to be the case for all the micro polys necessarily, uh, but just something to keep in mind. So we're going to go down here to the micro poly. We have fit and weld. And instead of applying this, because if I apply this right now, it's going to turn all of this into real geometry. Right now, it's just preview instance geometry. But we can still go through here. Let's also make this a little bit cooler looking. So the head selected, or with our plane selected here, let's go over here and we'll choose like MAH shiny. So we'll go over and give this like a, a shiny metal look. I'm going to go up here to M with my standard brush selected, go in here to color, fill object. And then we'll switch back over to our matte cap gray. So now this is going to be shiny metal, and this is going to be just a matte cap gray head. So I can go over here, and again, this is all just dynamic. It's just being created on the fly. So now if I turn on gravity, run that simulation again, that chain mail is going to be just applied to this plane, and it's going to act like a chain mail cloth. Now, of course, if I go up here and I turn firmness down to one and I run the simulation, it's going to be a very kind of silky, stretchy version, it still looks okay. The chainmail uh, actually kind of holds up in that direction too, but if you want to give it a more firm appearance, you know, just crank that firmness up a bit and then run the claw simulation. Of course, we go way more into depth than all these options in those earlier videos in this series. Uh, the other cool thing too is I go here to BCK for like cloth hook. I can go through here and I can just pull this cloth around. So very easily I'm able to go through here and just pull this cloth around. And remember, all I'm really doing turn dynamic off, I'm really just pulling this geo around. And this geo, all these faces, are driving this dynamic micro poly. So go through here, run the simulation again, and now that chain mail is just going to, you know, fall right on his head here. So we can go ahead and pull this back over, and because we have a collision surface, while we're using this, uh, it's going to go ahead and collide with his head. As well as, let's go ahead and undo back to where he just had the plane sitting there. We can hit B, T, C to grab our topology uh, transpose cloth. And now we can just like literally just move this around and have it interact with the head. We can go through here and we can rotate it. We can pull it back across the face. We can have chain mail stretched across his face here. And uh, that's the result we'll get. Now, because this is dynamic, I can literally go through here and say, you know what? I don't like that kind of chain mail. I want this kind of chain mail. And now I've got this kind. Or I can use these arrow keys to kind of go through here and swap out any kind of chain mail that I want, or there's also patterns in here. There's weaves, there's ropes, there's tubes. You know, so obviously you can get some very, very cool effects going here. So essentially that's what this previous and next button does. And in here, it's just replacing all of these uh, faces with a cube, so it's actually giving you this result. So in fact, if we go through here and we turn off weld, and we hit apply, and we say maybe set self collision to one, floor collision on, and we run the simulation, all those cubes are just going to kind of fall off his face and dynamically uh, start colliding with the floor and his head. So that's something cool you can do, and actually get, we'll get more in depth than that uh, later on. But let's go in here to like maybe one of these weaves, you know, this Oxford cloth here. 
Now this cloth pattern is a little too big. Remember, you can always still go through here and turn up that smooth subdiv. So this will be a very, very fine cloth look, and it's still completely compatible with you know our cloth transpose. You know, it's just a preview here. So while we're doing this, you know, we're just updating on the fly that micro mesh, micro poly pattern along with the cloth dynamics uh, being driven by an extra smooth subdivision thrown on the top. Put in some scales on here. And, you know, speaking of these scales, let's go ahead and drop this smooth subdivision down to zero. You're going to see they're all going and kind of pointing off to the left. Well, this is where rotate Z and rotate X comes into play. So I can rotate Z and we can put them all down or I can just, you know, rotate them all the way around. And then rotate X is going to rotate them around the X axis. So here they are all kind of laying flat. If I hit rotate X, now they're all rotated. So they're kind of, you know, pointing this way. Uh, so this will come in handy too, especially when you get into things like the rope. You can go here to like cloth 03. So you can go through here and you can say, you know what, let's rotate X. So they're all pointing this way. We're going to rotate Z so they're all straight up and down. Or we can rotate X so they're all individual components, etc. And there's another cool thing you can do here uh, as well. So now what we did before is we had a bunch of cubes that we applied and that turned those into real cubes that we dynamically subdivided. Well remember this is just a preview, just a preview plane. So if we want, here's another cool thing you can do, you can go to geometry, modify to modify topology, we go over down here to unweld all. And when I turn dynamic back on, again it's just a preview, however with this collision volume on here and we have uh, self-collision down to one, we can go ahead and have these individual planes drive those micro-poly instances. So it kind of looks like a rigid body simulation, but in reality, if I go out of here dynamic, it's just dropping planes all over the place, but every single one of these planes has a micro-poly attached to it. So that's another cool thing you could do. And again, we'll, we'll probably dive a little bit deeper into that later. We'll go do undo back to where we had just those scales applied, let's say. So anyway, you can go through here, you can pick any one of these, you can go through here and you can select on the fly just by going forward and back. You can go through here and you can, just like when we had the scales here, you can rotate in the Z, you can rotate in the X. Uh, we've already hit a line, but sometimes if we go, let's go out of edit mode, let's hit control N, let's go ahead and grab, or actually let's hit the comma key, Let's go into the tool menu here, and we're going to grab this polysphere. Hit the comma key, drag it, uh, drag it out on our canvas here. Let's go down to subdivision level 1 and delete higher. So if we go down here and turn on dynamic, turn smooth subdivision down to uh, 0. Let's go back in here, turn our micro poly on. We'll go ahead and grab those scales again. And here you can see, you know, the scales kind of follow a direction depending on uh, where they are. And there are some certain limitations to this align button here. Uh, you can hit align and it'll, it'll evaluate your mesh and it'll try and align it. Uh, but if you need to, you can also remember this is just geometry here. So what we can do is let's go grab uh, just another plain 3D, go into edit mode, make poly mesh 3D. Let's turn on our poly frame here. And we're going to go down here to geometry, reconstruct a couple times, hit delete higher. Let's turn on dynamic, smooth down to zero, micro poly on. And I'm going to choose this cross pattern. And in fact, let's uh, keep hitting reconstruct down. So it's a very simple geometry here. Let's go ahead and hit delete higher. So I have fit and weld scale set to one. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. I'm going to hold down control shift and just isolate just these green portions. I'm then going to go, go over here to geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. And now if I go back to dynamic and we have micro poly on, let's go ahead and switch this to something that just kind of goes in one direction like this cloth 03, which is kind of like a tube. So now you're going to see if I go in here to a line, it'll align them all in a straight line. But if that's not exactly what you're looking for, remember you can go in here to dynamic and you can hover over a face. And if you, with your Z modeler brush, B, Z, M, hover over a face, hold down the space bar and do the spin edges up here. What that'll allow you to do is if you turn dynamic back on, you can literally go through here and manually spin any of these in any direction you want. So if you want these to go, you know, across for some reason, just go through here and spin these edges and get the exact look you want. So for some reason you wanted this to go all the way across, you can just spin these edges and rotate them however you'd like. So you have a lot of control through here to be able to spin these edges and connect them all the way through here or connect these all the way through here, you know, depending on what you're trying to go for. Now you're going to see when I spun these two edges, now the rings were all going this way, but then these ones come backwards and then those one goes forwards. You can just keep spinning those edges 
until they all go point in the right direction. So again, if I put this one here, you see this one goes forward, this one kind of goes back, just spin it around until they all match. Get that's the look you're going for. Now we still have weld turned on, so when we go through here and we hit apply, and then we turn on dynamic, micro poly off, smooth sub div up to two, they should all still weld perfectly fine as long as they were lined up and those, those verts in those directions were close enough to be welded. Now let's take this undo history and let's go back to where we just had that flat plane. We go in here to micro poly, uh, we grab this hex tile here. You're going to see this hex tile is just one sided and they're not really matching up that well. So let's go in here and hit a line and that'll go ahead and line those up. So again, it's just one sided. If we wanted to give this thickness, what we'd have to do is like apply, turn dynamic back on, micro poly off, and then add thickness. And now we can get geometry thickness on there. Now, if we go back to where we just had uh, the micro poly on, and we can, we can turn dynamic on, let's hit a line here. Uh, so we have dynamic, we have this micro poly on those faces. If we add thickness over here, you're gonna see we're starting to get some more geometry over here. If I turn dynamic off, or I turn micro poly off, you're gonna see we're adding more faces on that dynamic thickness. So dynamic thickness can actually drive micro poly as well. If we turn micro poly back on, we take this dynamic thickness up, Again, these edges down here and this back here is all being driven by this dynamic thickness. If I turn thickness down to zero, just a single sided plane. As I crank this up, it's giving me new geometry, which is putting more micro poly topology on here. So again, you can go through here and you can put like, uh, here's a cool one, you know, this weave all the way around that dynamic thickness. You know, so kind of going through here and just kind of playing with some of these options will give you a pretty good idea of how these things are going to interact as you apply them. Even these tubes here are all wrapping in that dynamic thickness. And remember, you can go through, in order to spin dynamic edges though, because it's not real geometry, you're going to have to apply that dynamic thickness and then turn thickness down to zero, turn micro poly on. And then since this is real geometry, now you can go through here and you can spin these faces. So just little things you have to keep in mind if you wanted this to be like wrapped in a hose or something like that, you can go through here and you can spin these uh, in the correct direction.